I've got a problem. <clears throat> and it's honey. I love honey. I've loved honey my whole life. I think it is the greatest thing ever created on this planet. I went so far as to buy a beehive oh, probably a year and a half ago for my property down the York Peninsula. But as you can see, I decided not to stay put in one place. So I sent the hive back. But I was so dedicated to wanting to learn more about beekeeping and just have my own honey so I could have it anytime I wanted. But that wasn't really a bad decision because by purchasing honey, I get lots of different flavors I wouldn't get just in my one hive in my backyard. So this was not planned. I just noticed it this morning and thought, oh my gosh, I've got an awful lot of honey. So um, I thought I would share with you what I've been buying in Tasmania. Have I been buying little stuffed Tasmanian devils? No, I've been buying honey. And there's a couple of pots actually not shown here because I've already finished them off. <laughs> so, um, one of them was called Prickly Box. So this particular honey, and I'm a fan of raw honey, I guess um, I should point that out. Like I like the crystallized honey. I don't like the soupy honey that you would buy in a supermarket because it's all been heat treated. Um, it doesn't have those antibacterial properties like raw honey. Not that that's the reason why I buy it. Actually, the reason why I buy raw honey is because I like the crystals. And it's like candy to me. And I suck on the spoon. I know it sounds disturbing, but that is my problem. So this particular honey, I'll show you this one because this is half gone, this bottle. But it's called Prickly Box. And I've never heard of it. But uh, one morning, oh, maybe three or four weeks ago, I camped a free camp on the side of the road. And walking Cody in the dark, there was this little organic food stand that had a light on it it would have been like 5 30 6 o'clock in the morning but it's an honesty box and they had frozen blueberries they had broccoli it was a little organic from it had all their food on the side of the road that you could just buy and they trusted you to pay for it which i thought was amazing anyway, they had this bottle of prickly box honey i hadn't heard of it and i thought just by the look of the honey i would buy it and i did and loved it loved it loved it <laughs> So this is my second bottle of Prickly Box, but I found it on Bruny Island. So when I was visiting Bruny Island for a week over Easter, there was um, this bottle for sale in the little general store there. So and it said Prickly Box. I'm like, oh yeah, I just had that. I loved it. I'm going to buy that again. So I've been working on that um, one. But during my tastings, I tasted this one. This one's called Bush. Bruny Island Honey Bush. And it really does have that flavor of... Tasmanian bush like if I were to be able to describe the smell of what it's like to be walking in the forest in Tasmania I get that flavor from this honey it's a lot of moss a lot of ferns um, a lot of botanicals so if you can imagine that what that might smell like or even what that might taste like that's what I feel like that honey tastes like and it was really really special like to me I'm like I have to have that honey when I tasted it in the shop I have to have that honey and then I also tasted Manuka. Um, manuka is really, really famous for healing properties. And I would say that it's more famous from New Zealand than it is from Australia. But it's gaining popularity everywhere. And Manuka, the flavor wasn't a strong Manuka like I would think my New Zealand honeys that I normally buy are. But I still love Manuka. It's a number one favorite of mine. So I bought a little jar. That's just like, because I, I was buying a big jar of bush. I'm like, that's really special. And I thought, oh, no, nah, I'm going to buy a little jar of Manuka, even though I don't need it. Then when I was leaving Bruny Island, I was waiting in line to get on the ferry. And the man who was working there helping people park was talking to me and Cody while we were waiting to board. And I just told him, about this honey I've just bought which I was raving about as I do and he said oh you know if you, if you love honey make sure you stop at this honey shop um, coming down towards Port Arthur where I am now and I saw the shop that he described and I pulled in yesterday and of course they had another lineup of tastings and what the man told me at the ferry he's like you have to get the clover honey and he says nothing beats the clover honey and so I went in there, I was like, gosh, I don't really need any more honey, but if he says the clover honey can't be missed, I'm going to go for it. And so I went into the shop. I must have been the first one there in the morning. <laughs> and I said, I hear your clover honey is really, really special. I'd like to get a bottle of that. And she took me over and, and I said, oh, and she had a lot of honey. What else have you got here? And so why don't you go over and taste? So I went over and tasted their little range. They had fennel honey 
which was interesting. I didn't taste fennel, and interestingly enough, the lady at the honey shop, she's like, I don't really taste fennel either, but some people do. And um, I don't know what other flavors I went past there, but what I ended up buying was three more bottles of honey just from tasting because I love them, and I couldn't pass it up. So this is the clover honey. Um, oh, it's really nice. It's crystallized, but it's still a gooey crystal, which I just love. Mm. Definitely. You can definitely taste the clover in the honey. And it's very soft. It's a very soft. Because, you know, if you've got a crystallized honey here, the reason why it's crystallized is because it hasn't been heated or it doesn't have chemicals added to it to keep it soft. And I like that. I, that doesn't bother me a bit. So this was another honey in their lineup that I tasted that I really like. And it's eucalypt. Um, I've always loved the smell of eucalypt, like just the smell, like if you have a eucalypt fragrance or a eucalypt oil, I've always been drawn to it, and this is a eucalypt honey. See, it's very, very hard, this one. Um, you can put it in a pot with hot water if you want to soften it and make it soupy, or you can microwave it if you really want to, but I don't want to. I just eat it off the spoon, sometimes in my tea, of course, but I just eat it off the spoon anyway. Mmm. And then... It melts in your mouth. Mm. Oh man, I love that. I love that. So that's the eucalypt. And then this one I was attracted to because it's also eucalypt. And what was the difference is specifically in from this area. It's called Port Arthur eucalypt. So in particular, you see that's another hard honey. But as I said, I love it that way. And do I taste the difference between that eucalypt and this eucalypt? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I think it's a little bit too hard to describe, like in words, but I can taste the difference. And you see this Manuka honey is not so crystallized. I'm not sure why. I probably already tasted that in front of you and I just did it again. I have a problem. I'm telling you, I have a problem. <laughs> What can I say? Look, if I died from eating too much honey, I think that would be a life worth living. You, black and gold, black and gold, black and gold.